Our first lesson involves making sure you understand four things before we start algebra. Translation, exponents, absolute value, and order of operations. So, to translate from the English language into math, you have to know certain words. You know like 95% of these. Some of you probably know 100%. But we have to know the words that mean add, subtract, multiply, and divide. So now, if I was adding a column of numbers and I told you to add, I would say find the what. And starts with the letter S. I would say find the sum. So if you all saw sum, you would know to add. No big deal. If I also use the word find, and it starts with the letter T, I could find the total. So if you saw total, you would know to add. Then we've got increase by. And then we have more than. I'm going to circle more than because when we get done with our list, that's the one people get wrong. All right, subtract. If you saw minus, you would all know to subtract. If I use the word find, I would say find the difference. So if you all saw the word find the difference, you would know to subtract. The opposite of increase by is decrease by. So if something is decreased by something, it's going to go down. Then we've got less than. If something is less than another, and that's the one people get wrong through the whole course. Multiply. If you've been out of school, you might not know, but in a county college, the average age student's 29 or 30. So there could be somebody that's out of school a long time. You might have forgot the answer to a multiplication problem. Starts with the letter P. You have to know that if the question says find the product, you can't go and divide. Product means multiply. Then, you have to know the answer to a division problem. I'll write it down here. I need a little room. And it's quotient. So, you know mostly all of them. Somebody might have forgot the answer to a multiplication problem is called the product. The answer to a division problem is called the quotient. So if I had to translate x less than, well, first we won't do less than. We'll do x increase by 5. We translate as we read from left to right, except more than and less than. So as I read from left to right, no big deal, x plus 5. If I said the difference, of y and 2. Difference means subtract. I translate as I read from left to right. So my y is first, it's just the difference of y and 2. If I have 6 less than x, what that means is I have 6 less than x. I start with x, and I have 6 less than. So instead of going left to right, I think of it going the other way. It has to be x minus 6. It can't be the other way around. This is the one people get wrong all the time. Then product is no big deal. Product means multiply. Now, product. If I say the product of x and 3. Product means multiply, so I'm going to multiply x and 3. The only difference is, instead of writing x first, when we have a number in front, it's called the coefficient. And we we'll usually put the number first. I write 3x and not x3. If I said the quotient of 
4 and x. The difference is that when we translate, we translate as we read from left to right, except quotient goes top down. We're not going to use this sign, we're going to use a fraction bar. So, if I have to write the quotient of 4 and x, I'm going to write 4 divided by x. If I have to write the quotient of y and 2, I write whatever is first on the top, whatever is second on the bottom. So this one has to be y divided by 2. So when we translate, we translate as we read from left to right, except more than and less than, and quotient goes top down. Then you have to understand what an exponent is. If I have 2 to the third power, it means 2 times 2 times 2. This is my exponent, this is my base. An exponent tells me how many times the base is multiplied by itself. And I would get 8. If I have 3 to the 4th power, I'm going to have 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. So 3 3's are 9. 3 9's are 27. 27 times 3 is 81. So now, I have to know the difference between expanded form and exponential form. And this is just a language thing. Let's say I have exponential form. Expanded form. Let's say I'm going to have, let's see, 3 to the third power. To put it in expanded form, it's 3 times 3 times 3. Let's say I have 2 to the fifth power. It just means 2 times itself, 5 times. If I have 4 to the fourth power, it's just 4 times itself, 4 times. An easy way to remember, exponential form has the word exponent in it. That's the one with the exponents. Expanded form is stretched out. That's the one that's stretched out. So now all I have to do is put letters in. Let's say I have a squared. That means a times a. Let's say I have b to the fifth power. That means b times itself five times. If I have two letters, x to the third, y squared, that means I have x times itself three times, and I have y times itself twice. So the only thing I have to be careful of is if I have a parenthesis. Let's say I have 2a to the second power. A parenthesis is a grouping symbol. This is stuck together. So it means I have 2a times itself two times. Now we have to discuss absolute value. Absolute value is the distance from zero. So if I have my number line, and you've seen this before, I have zero. My positives are to the right, my negatives are to the left. Let's say I want to take the absolute value of 3. Now don't mix it up with parentheses, these are up and down straight bars. The absolute value of 3 means the distance from 0 to 3. So I go 1, 2, 3, it's going to be 3. Let's say I have the absolute value of, dis absolute value of negative 2. That's the distance from 0 to negative 2. So the answer is 2, because distance is always positive. If I drive 500 miles north, I drove 500 miles. If I drove 500 miles out south, I drove 500 miles. 
So absolute value is always positive. Let's say I have the absolute value of 17. It's going to be 17. The absolute value of minus 4 is going to be 4. Absolute value is always positive. So the only thing that can get confusing is when there's a negative in front. A negative in algebra means the opposite of. So if I have this, the ap negative, which means the opposite of the absolute value of 5. It means absolute value of 5 is 5, but the opposite of that is negative 5. Let's say I have the absolute value of 11. That means I have 11. Absolute value is 11, but the opposite is negative 11. So the only one that can be confusing is if I have negative the absolute value, let's say, of negative 1. Now, some of you know some algebra. Don't confuse this with parentheses. This is not this. Parentheses is totally different than absolute value. This means the absolute value of negative 1 is 1. The opposite of that is negative 1. So if we did a couple, let's say I have the absolute value of 7, absolute value of negative 7, minus the absolute value of 10, negative the absolute value of negative 8. So it can be confusing. The absolute value of 7 is the dis distance is always positive, is 7. The absolute value of negative 7, that's distance from 0 to negative 7, is 7. This is the absolute value of 10, which is 10, but the opposite of that is negative 10. This one. The absolute value of negative 8 is 8, and the opposite of that is negative 8. So I guess if you wanted to come up with a rule, I mean, absolute value is always positive, except when the negative is outside the bar. So you'll try a few of them. Then we just have one more topic for the first lesson, and that's a big one and it's order of operations. You have to be really good with this because this is gonna come up through the whole course. Order of operations. So most of you have seen this before. In math, there's a special order of operations. If I have this, two plus three times four. In a multiple choice test, they would either have 14 or 20. So which one do you think is the right answer? It's got to be 14. Because when I have more than one operation, I have multiplication and I have addition, there is a special order. And an easy way to remember it, hopefully you know, is please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Whoops. P-E-M-D-A-S. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally is an easy way to remember it. P stands for parentheses. E stands for exponents. M and D is multiplication division. A, S is addition and subtraction. So now, this is a memory guide. A common mistake is to think that multiplication always comes before division. The rule is, we do what's in parentheses first, then we do exponents. Then I do all multiplications or divisions as they appear from left to right. Same thing with addition subtraction. It's as they appear from left to right. 
So I look at this one. There's nothing to do in parentheses. There's no exponents. I have to do all multiplications or divisions before addition subtraction. So I'm going to get a 12. So I'm going to get 2 plus 12. So my answer is going to be 14. Let's do one a little bigger. Um, 3 times 8 minus 7 squared plus 10. Order of operations says do it in parentheses first. So I get a 1. I'm not going to skip any steps. I'm copying everything else over. I did what's in parentheses. Have to do exponents next. Be careful. 1 squared is not 2. 1 squared is 1 times 1. So I have 3 times 1 plus 10. Multiplications and divisions, I get 3 plus 10. So I'm going to get 13. All right, let's try another one. Let's try one big one that has everything in it. 50 minus 15 divided by 3 times 6 minus 4 to the third power. Order of operations says do it in parentheses first. So I'm not going to skip any steps. So I have 50 minus 15 divided by 3 times. I get a 2 cubed to the third power. Have to do exponents next. 2 to the third power is 2 times 2 times 2. 2 twos are 4. 2 fours are 8. So I have 15 divided by 3 times 8. Now, here's where some people go wrong. I did parentheses. If you have trouble, put these down at the top of your page, or if this is new to you, check them off. I did parentheses, I did exponents. I have to do all multiplication or divisions as they appear from left to right. So a common mistake, people remember this, but they think multiplication comes first. You can't multiply that first. The rule is, multiplication or division as they appear from left to right. So I scan from left to right and I see there's a division. Have to do that first in this case. So 3 and the 15 is 5 times 8. Can't do this next because I still have to do all multiplications divisions before addition subtraction. So I multiply that. So I get 50 minus 40. So my answer is going to be 10. We'll do one more, one more big one, and that'll be it. Let's say I have 4 minus 2 times 10 divided by 2 plus 7 minus 4 squared. I do what's in parentheses first. I get 2 times 10 divided by 2 plus 3 squared. Have to do exponents next. 2 times 10. Just copying this over. Don't make a mistake and put 6. 3 squared is 3 times 3, which is 9. Now I got to be careful. I got to do all multiplications or divisions as they appear from left to right. So I scan from left to right and I say, I got a multiplication. So in this case, I have to do that first. So I have 20 divided by 2 plus 9. Got to do all multiplication divisions before I do addition subtraction. So I'm going to get 10 plus 9. So I'm going to get 19. That's it.